Welcome back to Let's Play Might and Magic 7, Episode 3. Syndrome here with Breaking the Scream. We left off last time, uh, having just finished the scavenger hunt on the Emerald Isle. Uh, and here we are in Harmondale. So the first thing we're going to do is just approach it and make contact with our butler here. Uh, our butler is informing us that the castle has been taken over by goblins, and we need to clear it out. So while we're doing the dirty work, our butler here is going to go to the local inn and get his drink on. So good for him. Just going to toss a few spells up here. You know, you know what I forgot to do last time? I leveled up, but I never actually allocated out my skill points. So why don't I take care of that now? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put, let's see, fire magic and air magic up to four. Yeah, just enough to do that. On the Thief, I'm going to go ahead and... You know, with that 16-point bonus, I'm going to hold off on Disarm Trap just for now. And I'm going to put all of those points... I'll get Dagger up to Expert, and then I'll start putting the points into Sword. Let's see. On the Paladin, I'm going to take Body Magic up to 4. And then he'll work on the sword as well. And on the knight, uh, let's see. On the knight, we'll put sword up to four and repair item up to four. Okay. So now that air and fire are both up to four, these buffs are going to last quite a bit longer. So now that we no longer have the Day of the Gods buff, um, our attack delays are going to be quite a bit higher than they were on the Emerald Island. Not too bad, though. And we still have a pretty significant advantage just from having these really good weapons. Now, a common terrain feature in the Might and Magic series are these barrels. Each contains a colored liquid, uh, which represents a different stat. So the best way to allocate those would be to check the color of the liquid and then have whichever character is going to get the most benefit out of it, use it. Um, honestly, though, at least when we're doing the light path, stats really aren't going to matter that much. So I'm just going to drink everything with the party leader. I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> got him. Too easy. That was easy. I think that is everything in this wing. Just a few barrels to drink. So Castle Harmondale has a long, colorful history. Um, at some point during the wars between Arathia and Tularia, I think that it was taken over by a group of necromancers. Uh, so it actually has a torture chamber in its basement, um, a real dungeon type area. Um, so once we have the castle repaired, we'll gain access to that location. So these piles of rubble and garbage um, are searchable terrain, but unless you have the appropriate level of the perception skill, um, you will acquire, I think, I think disease. It might be poison. It might actually vary. Um, 
So since nobody has a perception skill, I'm not going to bother with those. Uh, the loot you get out of them is really not worthwhile, so there's no good reason to do so. Too easy. Oh, okay. Well, uh, apparently I was close enough to uh, that heap that uh, Syndrome accidentally used it. So I will just whip up a Wonderful. quick Wonderful. cure disease potion to get rid of that from him. And one last room, and Harmondale will be clear. At least the castle. All right, and I think that will do it. Just gonna eat some food. So in order to regain health in this game, the typical way that you do that is by resting. You can only rest when you're not near any enemies. Um, and it takes eight hours to do so. So if I enter the resting screen, it gives me this option to rest and heal for eight hours. And it costs this much food. Um, I generally don't heal that way. Um, typically, I will just go to a church and pay them a little bit of gold. Uh, the downside is, eventually, lack of sleep will kill you or make you insane. So, uh, you do have to sleep at some point. But, um, generally, I'll heal that way. So, here I am in the church. I'm just going to make sure I'm not missing any skills. I'm not. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just heal everybody up. The second thing is I'm going to donate. So if I take a look at my reputation, it's currently neutral. By donating in a church, until you hear that noise, um, it will result in a reputation increase. I'm also going to talk to Taryn here, who's given me a quest to go to the Barrow Downs. Uh, so we'll take care of this in a later episode. Okay, before I go to the tavern and talk to my butler. I'm going to save the game real quick. Um, I need to find my NPCs that are going to be with me for the rest of the game. Generally, what I like to find is a scholar Hello. and either a teacher Hi. or an instructor. So Hi. hopefully I'll find both of those Greetings. in one go here, but that's probably unlikely. So Greetings. what I'll end up doing is I'll probably just skip Greetings. ahead to Hi. after I've already located them. Hello. But I'll do one Hello. run through the town just to see if I get lucky. Hi. Greetings. It looks Hello. like I'm not going to be lucky, so I will load the game here, and I will pick up right after I have both my NPCs. Greetings. Greetings. Hi. Greetings. Greetings. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. Hello. Greetings. Hi. Greetings. 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 That didn't actually take long at all, so I'm just going to let that one be. Um, so here I have my scholar and my teacher. Uh, Scholar allows for unlimited item identification, which allows us to ignore the identify item skill, and also gains a 5% bonus on experience gained. The teacher just gives a straight up 10% bonus to experience. Um, at some point, I would like to replace this teacher with an instructor who does the same thing but gives a 15% bonus, but uh, I don't think that you can find an instructor in Harmondale, so I'll look for them once I go to Arathia. Okay, um, a few things to do in town here. They could level up. Um, wouldn't be a terrible idea, but I think I'll hold off for the time being. Uh, nothing... Hi, how are you? Let me just take a quick look. Sometimes they'll have good potions for sale. 
magic item shop. I always just try to keep an eye out for anything that might be particularly useful. Nothing that I see. Oh, please. Here we just have a few skill trainers. I think this will be the first skill trainer that we use. Uh, Shane Thomas will teach us the clear item skill, so I'll pick that up, and he'll lead us to the master of the skill, who's at Natalia. Uh, nothing else there. I'll pick up a quest from Darren Temper here. His brother has gone missing, and it's the only quest we are actually going to be taking care of in Harmondale, so I will wrap that up this episode. Ashen Temper is the master fire magic trainer, so we will come back to her once we've gone through the wizard promotion quest. Uh, this is just a house filled with monks, I believe, and unarmed and dodging. Okay, so on the ground here, we have horseshoes. Um, horseshoes are a consumable, somehow, uh, that when consumed, I like to think that they eat them, but they gain uh, two skill points each. So I will probably end up using all of those on the sorcerer, just because... Uh, he is going to have a lot more skills that he will need to focus on than anybody else. So I'll just start putting those into water magic. Um, but those are going to be located in each of the zones next to their stable. Traveling today. Next up is the weapon shop. Here weapon. we're going to learn the dagger skill on syndrome. I don't think anybody else needs anything, but let's just see if there's anything for sale. Uh, let's see if we have anything to sell. Yeah. Junk, but... Thanks. Come again. Might as well. See anything you want? Here, we're going to learn a couple armor skills. So we're going to learn Chain on the Thief and the Paladin. We're not going to learn Chain on the Knight. And then we'll just do a quick check for anything worthwhile and sell our random items that we've received. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to shuffle my gear around a little bit. Uh, put chainmail on each of them. Still can't use the plate armor until I go to Arathia. Learn the skill there. Let's see, this now that I have a scholar, I can identify any mm, items. I have found. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Syndrome here has the most annoying voice in the game. Uh, if you go down the dark path, he'll eventually turn into a lich, which remedies that. But on the light path, we're just going to have to put up with it. Let's see. I think that dagger is actually going to do more damage than the sword because of that enchantment. So I'll stick with the dagger for now. And... Yeah, I think at that point, we're ready to proceed. Come in, come in. The butler, having been informed that the goblins have been kicked out, says that we should go talk to the dwarves in Stone City to fix our keep up. Um, this is the main story quest, so in order to press the storyline, we'll need to help the dwarves with a stony problem that they have. Dabrik here is going to give us a quest to go to Arathia, so we'll take care of that once we head there. Um, there is a game called Archomage, uh, we don't have the deck to do to participate yet, but um, it's it's fine. It's um, it's it's a card game. It doesn't really flow well with the rest of the game. So what I think that I'm going to do is I will make a separate episode once I have access to all of the zones, where I just go through and I play each of the hands. Um, it's it it would interrupt the flow of the game too much, I think, to do anything else. Okay, so before I proceed, let me just take a look at my stats here. Personality is pretty good. Accuracy. Okay, so ah, Harabao. Hello. This gentleman here is actually a goblin in disguise. Um, he's trying to trick us into lighting some beacon fires, uh, very Lord of the Rings style, to summon aid from the neighboring kingdoms. What that'll actually do is it'll summon a random goblin army to attack the city. Uh, I don't think that's particularly difficult, and I actually think that it might be 
bugged so that it no longer works. But uh, we'll we'll try that once we return later in the game with the fly spell. So right now I'm just going to climb up here, find another of those challenge games, and see which stat it's going to go off of. So it's off of Endurance, which I don't think anybody has high enough to trigger. Uh, 44 here, so it might have been close. Given that, I'm assuming that it takes a stat of 50 to pass. Uh, so we'll have to do that once we have Day of the Gods. I'm just going to cast Feather Fall here so that I don't injure myself hopping down the cliff. Stone Skin will give us a little bit of an AC boost. So the entire area has been just swarmed by goblins, so I'm going to take a quick little jaunt through here and uh, mess some of them up. The only thing that we need to take care of in Harmondale for now is that first quest given to us by uh, Darren Temper. So the goblins are currently manning the fort um, poorly, since they seem to have killed themselves with their own magic. That was easy. Uh, basically, if you get too close to the entrance there, uh, those spells will hit you. But now that I'm here, by going to the center of the fort, it spawns four groups of goblins in the area. So I'm just going to run around, trigger the magic a bunch of times, and hope that that kills them. So that killed most of them. I'm also going to open up this trap door here with chest in it. This, I think, is what triggers the um, that traitor goblin this is weak. event. Uh, so I'll pick that scroll up and see if it does. Here we have some of our guards fighting the goblins. Need to be careful not to accidentally attack them. So right now I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick up the uh, the big batches of goblin corpses just to try and keep my gold situation healthy. I definitely got a nice boost from the items we got off the dragon, but uh, we'll burn through that quicker than you'd expect with uh, just training costs. That was easy. That was easy. If you're not careful with these attacks, you can accidentally harm the guards, which will make you kill on sight with them for, I think it's 30 days, it might be 60. In any case, I uh, don't want to trigger that status. Okay, that should be enough looting for now. Uh, so now I'm going to head to... A small little hamlet, which is in the southern part of the zone. No match for me. Okay. 
Here we'll pick up the first monk promotion quest, which even though none of our characters are monks, uh, we'll still gain experience by completing it. So I like to do all of the promotion quests. And that comes from Bartholomew Hume here. Uh, Ronald there, let us join the Mind Guild. Even though I don't use mind magic, I'm going to buy it in case for some reason I decide to. Now, Rut Ridrick here is an interesting NPC. Um, basically, there are a series of NPCs in each zone that allow you to engage in a little bit of arbitrage. Um, so we can buy arrowheads here from him for 200 gold per crate. And we'll do that. We'll buy as many as we can no fit space. in our inventory. No room. Let me see how we're doing there. I'll buy a couple more. Just Oh, actually, we bought as many as we could buy. So I think that these people are on a timer, so there's only so many you can buy within a certain amount of time. Um, but we'll be able to sell that in Arathia for a profit. I'll also join the Water Guild and the Earth Guild, even though I don't use Earth Magic. I don't think there are any important NPCs in this town other than Chadrick Town Saver, who will need much later for Sword Grand Mastery. So we'll proceed onwards to the White Cliff Caves, which is where Darren's brother went missing. So off to the right here, you can see the first of those beacon fires that I mentioned. I might as well just trigger it because we're here. Um, let's see, a couple goblin in our way, nothing particularly difficult, nothing we haven't been dealing with already. Ow. Okay, there are also a couple goblins outside that I'll just deal with pretty quickly. <laughs> And there's also a chest up ahead that is always good for a little bit of extra money. Hmm. Could be better. Oh! That is a perfect find. I have an excellent use for that scroll later on in Tatalia. So I need to make sure that I don't accidentally sell that. Ow! Too easy. Too easy. There are certain quests in the game that are difficult to finish if uh, you don't have the right set of magic skills. Um, that will let us access one of them before we would ordinarily be able to do so. So that uh, was a good find. This game, Sage, is also located in Harmondale, I believe, just across the lake over here. Um, the Sage will give you any quest items that you've mistakenly thrown away. Um, he'll also give you hints if you don't know where to go. Uh, so this is the White Cliff Cave. Um, so I'm going to be proceeding to here. Now... Inside here, we are going to be introduced to two new types of enemies. We have Troglodytes, which are pretty basic enemies, just uh, a little bit tougher than the goblins we've been fighting, but nothing really special about them. The other type of enemy are Oozes. Now, Oozes are immune to all physical damage. So, for a standard low-level party, they can be somewhat problematic to deal with. Luckily, the weapons that we got off of the dragon, at least some of them, deal elemental damage. So we'll be able to deal with them much easier than we ordinarily would be able to be. And be very careful in this room here. Uh, this wall is... Actually, why don't I just save and see? Maybe... Maybe with a skill of one perception, that's enough to loot it. It is. Okay. So this is 
iron laced ore. I really don't care about iron. Um, it's not going to give me anything that's really useful. This is weak. This is weak. But later in the game, there will be other types of ore that we can get from similar veins, which we'll need to keep an eye out for. Here we have an ooze fighting a couple of troglodytes. The ooze will win in the end, but I might as well step in and get the experience for those kills. So now as you can see, we're dealing damage to the ooze, but only for the elemental component that our weapons are doing. I think I got it. This is weak. I think I got it. Uh. And this will take us back to the entrance. So I think there's just one more passageway we need to explore. Got it. Figures. This is weak. Okay, so now I've looted the side passages, so I'm going to continue on with the right direction. To the extent that I remember the layout of the dungeons, I always try to loot everything extra first and then go for the main objective. Okay, so the thief has been poisoned, so I'll mix up a cure poison potion for her. Eventually, we'll have the body magic spell to cure poison and disease, but uh, those require a level of skill that Paladin isn't capable of until he goes through his promotion quest. We've got a couple uses. One or maybe it's just one. Was that supposed to hurt? Okay, it's not too bad. I think I got it. Ow. Okay, and here we have Darren Temper's brother with his Archomage deck and a note. quick. It gives strategies for playing Archimage, but that is not something I really care about. Okay, now all that's left to do is to head back to town and turn in this quest. So let's see, we're already past 6 p.m., so none of the shops or anything is going to be open. Um, I think that I will probably... It probably makes sense to train now. Before I do that, though, I'm going to take a quick trip to the arena. But I'll deal with that in just a minute. Once we have the fly spell, traversing the world just becomes so much easier. <laughs> 
So our, our first real priority is going to be obtaining the wizard promotion quest. Uh, that requires finding golem pieces, which are scattered around, I want to say, maybe five zones. Um, once we do that, we can learn Master of Air and Water Magic. Uh, which gives us access to the light spell, the invisibility spell, and the town portal spell. Um, and once we have those, we'll just be able to zip around all over the place. Okay, turn that in. Uh, let's see, anything else I need to do before I rest? Okay, so it's Friday. So what I'm going to do is I will rest until dawn, twice, and then rest for another hour. So now it's 6 a.m. on Sunday, which is when the arena opens. So every Sunday we can travel to the arena, which is a coliseum sort of fight. Um, difficulty is determined by both our level and the difficulty that we choose between page and lord um, there is a quest that requires you to win a certain number of lord arena matches i think that it's on the dark path so i don't think that it matters to us but i might as well just get lord out of the way early on um, because we have good equipment uh, these guys are really not going to pose much of a challenge to us at all uh, so it's better to get these done earlier rather than later. Eventually, this will be filled with titans and dragons and all other sorts of nasties that are rather hard to deal with in a open setting like this. So I think there's one spider left. So, a quick 2,000 gold. Okay, and we return to town on a Monday. Okay, I think that I will call this one here and pick up next time when we head to Arathir. Take care.